Here's what's happening on this edition of the Center of It All. We stop by local farmers markets to see what's fresh. We check out the wildlife for warriors, Spruce Creek Classic. And Mel is baking up a twist on pizza. These stories and more coming up next on the Center of It All. Hello and welcome to the center of it all. The Bullsburg Farmers Market is a hot spot for local farmers and vendors. With the change in season, we stop by some local farmers markets to see what's fresh. Fall produce is usually associated with apples and pumpkins. This time of year, farmers markets are booming with late summer produce. September is actually the best month, I think, for produce because you still have a lot of summer stuff. Uh, peppers are ripening to red and golden and they're most delicious then. Eggplant, beans, they're still in season. And then the fall stuff's starting to come on too. So you've got all your cool season leaky greens, broccoli, kale starting to taste really good. And then sweet potatoes are coming, carrots, beets. Well, we're primarily, we're past peach season now. We're wrapping up corn. We still have some sweet corn, but not a lot left. Uh, so we're predominantly into apples and some of the winter squash and things like that. Uh, at the farm, we have a lot of pumpkins and gourds and, and Indian corn and all those kinds of things. But typically, we don't bring a whole lot of that in until maybe the weekend before Halloween. Sarah Burnt grows her own eye-catching seasonal flowers on a quarter acre lot. Well right now it's like a lot of yellow things, like a uh, tail end of sunflowers, many different kinds of fun sunflowers and black-eyed Susans. I also have dahlias, which are the great big bulbs that you have to plant every spring and then you have to dig them up in the fall and store them in the basement. Uh, mums are starting to come on now. and. Um, autumn type poofy things like these grasses. They're fun to put in bouquets too. Sarah also grows and sells rather unusual plants. I grow uh, succulents. Succulents and cacti seem to be pretty popular right now and I have huge plants at home and I take little pieces off of the huge plants, put them in pots, grow them up and bring them in. She says the State College Farmers Market is a great place to sell her bouquets. I love coming into the market, I love the students, young people, you know, they're just, they're just great to talk to. Also at the State College Farmers Market is Harner Farms, serving up tasty fall treats for the hungry shoppers. Yeah, that's probably one of the most popular things we have here. Let's say uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little, very simple machine that cuts the apple in eight slices and takes the core out. And uh, we'll put caramel on top of that and sprinkles or peanuts or both. And, uh, and that's two dollars and it's just a real nice kind of snack to be eating on a kind of a nice fall day like this. When we come back on the center of it all, we are at a fly fishing tournament at Home Waters in Spruce Creek. An inaugural fishing tournament was recently held at Spruce Creek to aid wounded military personnel and the Pennsylvania wildlife. Wildlife for Everyone Endowment Foundation and Project Healing Waters Fly Fishing Inc. welcomed anglers and military veterans to the inaugural Wildlife for Warriors Spruce Creek Classic. Project Healing Waters, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we work with uh, both wounded and disabled uh, military service personnel and wounded and disabled veterans. Uh, we use fly fishing, fly tying, raw building, and everything associated with fly fishing as a means of uh, therapeutic um, recovery for uh, wounded and disabled veterans. Home Waters came to us and they have been participating on other activities and they told us about the Healing Waters uh, project and the veterans and a number of our board members are veterans and so we saw the opportunity to, to help with the wounded veterans and uh, so uh, this is our first event and uh, we're excited about doing it and I'm certain after I report back to the board, we'll be wanting to do uh, 
just on a continuous annual basis. This event was hosted by Home Waters, a private fishing club. Started out as a club and now it's semi club and and uh, and uh, and uh, maybe weekend visitors, and uh, they they use a lot of their proceeds uh, to help to maintain the uh, the uh, Spruce Creek and the Little J and a number of other streams throughout Pennsylvania and I think as far as Colorado, uh, so that it's a positive uh, a positive uh, activity that they. Uh, they do, even though they're a private organization. A nationwide organization, Project Healing Waters, uses fly fishing as a rehabilitative and therapeutic outlet for wounded veterans and active military personnel. I was wounded in Iraq in 2005 by an IED. I was medevac to Walter Reed in Washington, D.C. Uh, while I was there, I got introduced to the program. I never fly fished before in my life. Um, I had a friend that kept on bugging me and he finally got me to do it and went out and caught my first brook trout and it was awesome, it was amazing. And I went on one of my first big fishing trips with him and it was just a real life changing experience for me. Uh, it, <clears throat> it gave me a positive outlet for the things that I was dealing with and uh, I just loved it so much that I started giving back, volunteering and then when I medically retired from the army. Uh, I came on full-time staff with Project Healing Water, so I've been working with them for seven years now. The day wasn't just about fierce competition out on the water. On the shore, the veterans spent time bonding with each other. And talking uh, about, uh, well, I was with some of the Vietnam vets and we were uh, discussing uh, our times there and uh, what we were all doing and, and the relationship. Uh, some of the guys opened up a little bit and that's that's important. So, um, that is the side effect, the spin-off of this entire thing. So therefore it's healing waters. One of the day's competitors served in the Army in the Vietnam War and started fly fishing just three years ago after he got involved with Project Healing Waters. I myself, I'm an amputee. I lost my leg in Vietnam. So it gets me out into the elements and I get to travel in the water and it, uh, it helps with your balance and stuff like that. It's, it's just uh, the calming waters out there is what makes it really nice. Since launching in 2005 at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, Project Healing Waters has grown into a nationwide organization aiding wounded veterans returning home. When we come back on the center of it all, Mel is baking up a treat perfect for that game day snack or that everyday lunch. Welcome back to the center of it all. Mel is melting layers of meat and cheese on this edition of Kitchen Encounters. For me, the perfect definition of the perfect appetizer or snack is one I can make ahead freeze if I need to, and is perfect for any occasion all season long. I've taken this one to tailgate, served it at cocktail parties, and put it in my kids' lunch boxes. So what am I making today? Rotola de pizza. Pizza bread! Let's get started. While pizza bread can be made with any pizza dough, even store-bought, if you have the time to make your own, I highly recommend you do, and here's why. Beside the, besides the requisite sugar and salt, you can flavor the dough. And I'm using black pepper, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning blend. And I'm just gonna stir that right into my flour. And from here, you can mix it the conventional way by hand, kneading it on this board. You can get out your stand mixer. You can get out your food processor. My appliance of choice is the bread machine because in 55 minutes it's going to knead and rise my dough and I'm going to be ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the pan of my machine two tablespoons of olive oil, a cup and a half of hot water. When you're working in a bread machine you always put your wet ingredients in First, it's kind of the opposite of your food processor. And I'm just going to spoon all of my flavored flour right on the top.
once I get most of it out of this bowl, I can just kind of dump it in. Now I'm just gonna make a little indentation or a well on the top of the flour. I'm going to add one packet of yeast. I'm gonna take my bread pan, put it into my bread machine, turn it on, and in 55 minutes, I'm going to have enough of dough to make two loaves of pizza bread. My dough is out of the dough machine. I had two pounds of dough, and I've put, put one pound each on each of two 10 inch by 15 inch baking pans and I've patted it out with my fingertips, just like you would a pizza crust, except you're not going to form the, the crust. You're going to keep it kind of flat and free form. Now we're gonna layer it, alternating our meats and our cheeses. And when you're buying your cheeses, you can put anything you want in this, but just tell your deli counter to slice them as thin as possible so they don't fall apart when you pick them up because if your slices are too thick, your pizza bread is gonna split open and the filling is gonna ooze out while it bakes. So that's a really important trick. And I'm, I'm starting with six slices of a nice thin sliced, they call this here in the Happy Valley, deluxe ham. And pay attention here because this layering process, you just don't put stuff all over the surface of the crust. Okay, we've got six slices of ham. Now, you see where I put these. What you want is close to you, a really short little opening on the sides, about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch but on the top, you wanna to leave an open strip of about two inches. And all of your fillings, no matter what you're putting in, gets layered in this two thirds of the crust. So we've got six slices of ham. Now I'm going to add six slices of provolone cheese because it's Italian and Italians always put provolone cheese in their pizzas and their breads. Now it's time for the salami. And I'm going with eight slices. This is Genoa salami. And it's always meat, cheese, meat, cheese. For my next cheese, mozzarella. Six slices, the same as the provolone. And pepperoni, because it's smaller than the salami, we're gonna do 10 slices of salami, of pepperoni, sorry about that. And my last uh, cheese choice is um, a Cooper CV or Sharp. If you can't find this, which it's available everywhere in Happy Valley, you'll want to use some American cheese. And I use this because it really melts super creamy and it's a great cheese to have in the middle of a pizza roll. And I'm just going to put six slices of this. This would make a great sandwich, right? in the middle. And lastly, a really good sprinkling of either parm rege, but I'm using Asiago cheese today because I like the tang of the Asiago. And now it's time to roll. And this is a little tricky. This is the part where any person who makes a pizza bread wishes they had three hands. You only have two, and don't worry about it. It's a lot easier. I'm going to show you how I do it. You want to lift up your corners right here, the side closest to you. The first roll is the hardest part, but you just want to give it a nice, firm push. And I mean a nice, firm push. See, that wasn't too bad. 
Now I'm going to pull it, give it a little tug towards me, and I'm going to turn it up. And with every turn, I'm going to give it a gentle tug towards me. And a gentle tug towards me. And when I get to this open strip here, I just lift this over the top. And I'm going to firmly, 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 firmly seal that. And then I'm going to gently do the same thing with both ends. I'm going to roll it over. Now that may not look perfect, and I have a little bit of a tear there, but do not fret about that. I'm going to set this aside to rise for a full hour before I bake it in a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes. And if you see this little tear, when the dough rises, I'm going to have enough of excess from the risen dough here to just patch that up with my fingertips right before it goes in the oven. Any season of the year, hot or cold, any way you slice pizza bread, hot, warm, cold, or leftover, it's always the perfect time for this family-friendly, crowd-pleasing appetizer. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. A perfect dough and a perfect sauce make a perfect snack. When we come back on the center of it all, we celebrate 502 Fest. Welcome back. PSECU opened their new service center in downtown State College this summer. They recently held a street party to welcome the community. Since a large portion of the State College community was away for their grand opening, PSECU held 502 Fest. Well, actually, we first opened back in June, and a lot of the students were off on uh, summer break, so we wanted to welcome them back. So we put together our 502 Fest, and it's just to welcome them back and welcome fall to the community. It may have been 502 Fest, but displayed proudly almost everywhere was the number 22. 22 um, stands for our founding fathers, 22 state employees during the height of the depression when banks weren't loaning money. They got together, they pulled together their uh, sources and they came up with $90. That they loaned among each other that $90 and from there we're now a $4.5 billion company. This event was a whole lot of fun. But one of the main purposes was to introduce students to PSECU's financial literacy program. We find that a lot of students, um, by the time they graduate, they find themselves in a lot of debt. And our goal is to help them not do that. So we'll be giving free financial literacy courses and make them think. Uh, simple questions that they might not nor normally think about will help them to think smarter and, and bank smarter. This branchless credit union sees their new service center and this event as a way to connect with their members in the State College area. We see this as a growing market and it's de definitely strategic for PSCCU. And this is kind of a, a hybrid, if you will. What we want to do is um, kind of be a service center, concierge service to our members and also to help our, the community in general learn more about PSCCU. We are still branchless, there's no tellers, you, you do not do transactions here, but we're here to show you how to make your transactions work and to make sure you're getting the very best out of your accounts. PSECU is one of the largest Pennsylvania credit unions, serving over 400,000 members. A new study shows about 14% of the U.S. population has type 2 diabetes. 
Experts say it's further evidence that the numbers appear to be leveling off. Dr. Bay Tulhat Tibaglu did not take part in the study, but treats diabetes at the Cleveland Clinic. She says the study confirms previous research, and while the leveling off is good news, it also emphasizes the undiagnosed diabetes and prediabetes continue to be a problem. You can almost stretch it to half of the population having prediabetes, which means you are at risk to develop diabetes in the coming decade or so. Diabetes is a major cause of illness and death in the United States. Complications from diabetes include blindness, kidney problems, nerve damage that can lead to amputations, heart disease, and stroke. Dr. Haptiba Glue says one of the problems with diabetes is that people don't feel bad until it's too late. She recommends taking matters into your own hands by talking to your doctor about your risk for diabetes and what you can do to reverse or prevent it. She says living a healthy lifestyle is a good place to start. Exercise is very important. Making yourself active throughout the day is very important. And portion control, healthy choice of your food. Each time you put something in your mouth, you should ask yourself, is it really worth for me to eat that? Complete results for the study can be found in the Journal of the American Medical Association. That's all for this edition of The Center of It All. For more great WHVL content, log on to our YouTube page and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and have a great week.